Vanguard. It's a card game where you can become a leader and fight your way to victory. Imagine it. Imagination becomes your strength. Hey, what's up, card fighters? My name is Dev from Dev's Utopia, and in this Overlord deck profile, we're going to be running 8 grade 3s, 11 grade 2s, and 14 grade 1s. To start off our list, we're going to be running 4 copies of the Cross. The Cross makes the end a very playable deck and allows us to survive a lot more. Because of the Cross, we can basically try to rush our opponent, even when they're at grade 2. We can try to rush and end the game as soon as possible. But you got to realize that the Cross is a Force 2 specific deck, at least this deck is. I haven't found really a list, or I haven't found any way to make Force 1 work. And in my opinion, if your opponent survives for too long, that's when you're going to start losing steam. So you really got to keep the pressure on as much as possible. Next, we're going to be running three copies at the end. Now, you never want to run less than three copies at the end, especially since, you know, you don't know what your damage check might be. It might be the end itself. If you're really unlucky, of course, bump this number up to four. But you can always return the end back to deck with Torrid Cannon and even the Grade 2 that was replaced by Torrid Cannon. So, with that in mind, you know, 3 is a good number. Now, when it comes to the end skills, when it comes to the cross becoming the end by activating the skill, uh, you can always restand once per turn. With the Counter Blast, Soul Blast, you know, if you have 4 or less cards, well, the cross says you have 0. So, you're always guaranteed 1 restand. The second restand, the discard three to end game plus 10k, as long as you have an Overlord and Soul. Now, that all depends on the situation. It's a judgment call. There's been times where I have a lot of triggers in my hand, and I said restanding is not the best option. And there's been times where my opponent plays a protect deck, and they got protect markers in their hand. Well, again, if they can just PG it, restand, it might not be... Restanding a second time might not be the best option. Now, early game, you know, that's really critical. You know, you can rush your opponent, make sure that they can't do a lot on their grade three turn. But later on, when you're trying to survive, that's when you really need to think before you discard those three cards. Last but not least for our grade three slot, we're going to be running one copy of Dragonic Overlord. Dragonic Overlord is a really good rear guard, especially when you have him late game and you have like a second uh force two marker you can soul blast the end away return the end back to deck with torrid cannon and then doing the entire cycle all over again uh, and at the same time and all that you know 23 isn't anything to scoff at when your vanguard can restand multiple times so it really forces your opponent to think who should i guard and who should i just take at the end of the day you can always at Dragonic Overlord to Soul, and if you do hit, you get to be able to restand. That's only in situations where you believe that, uh, you know, it's not worth putting the end in Soul. Maybe it's late game, and maybe all your ends can't be returned because maybe you don't have any Torrid Cannon or etc. The cross is only scary when the cross becomes a different Overlord. Having a regular vanilla cross attack is nothing to be worried about. It's only when the cross takes the name of some other overlord is when it actually poses a threat. So, regular overlord is better than nothing. But if you feel like you're unlucky, always just run for the ends instead. That is completely valid. A lot of people run it like that anyway. I just added the the uh, over dragonic overlord to the mix because with the end, because I played the end when it first came out. The one thing I didn't like about the end is that you didn't have any rear guard presence. You didn't have any rear guards that would basically be a threat. Having a 23 with an extra crit is more dangerous and more threatening than a regular 10k or 13k column. To start off a grade 2 lineup, we're going to be running 4 copies of Torrid Cannon Dragon. Now, the reason we run Torrid Cannon instead of the old grade 2 is because, of course, returning the end back to deck is extremely important in this deck. But because the cross says you always have zero cards at hand, you can just draw a card and hopefully get some more pieces in your hand. Now, yes, it sucks that you can only retire Grey Two and less rear guards, but what's most important is just, you know, at activating the cross assault skill and adding the end into soul. Now, when it comes to timing for this, right, you really want to make sure 
you search first, then add the end back to deck because you really don't want to have the end be a drive check. You know, you have to shuffle after you search for the crop, so for the end and add it to soul. So what I usually do, I usually try to make sure that I have at least one other card in soul and everything, especially thanks to Gibble, uh, you know, adding itself to soul. I soul blast the end away, add another end from deck to, to soul, and then Torrid Cannon returns that end to the bottom of the deck so I don't have to shuffle and the end can stay on the bottom of the deck. Torrid Cannon is extremely important. Sometimes it might be best to put it behind another rear guard. Now, when I say that, you don't want to lose Torrid Cannon. You need to be mindful of how many Torrid Cannons are left in deck, how many Torrid Cannons are in your hand. Uh, and I usually put Torrid Cannon behind uh, Dragonic Overlord, my rear guard Dragonic Overlord, or even Igni Road. And speaking of Igni Road, we're going to run three copies of Igni Road Dragon. Now, Igni Road is a free searcher. When placed, search top seven for the cross, specifically the cross. That is extremely good. But it's also its rear guard skill of getting plus five every time your Vanguard attacks is also really good. It doesn't really need a booster. So being in front, having Igni Road in front of Torrid Cannon is more important than and to me than having Torrid Cannon in front row and then having your opponent attack it or even get rid of it with a skill. Now, of course, if you're going against decks that can retire from anywhere, they're going to probably target Torrid Cannon because they see how the engine works. They see the, how the cross works. But it's just comforting to think that when you're going against a deck that doesn't retire, having Torrid Cannon in back row is extremely safer. Last but not least for our grade 2 lineup, we're going to be running four copies of Wyvern Strike, the Cot. The Cot makes this deck a lot more formidable because Guard Restrict along with uh, Restanding uh, restanding Vanguard is extremely deadly. Now, I wouldn't say that the Cot makes or breaks the deck. It's in a sense of you can guarantee a lot more wins as long as you have the, the end restands and the, the Cot combo. That's why it's maxed out. Igni Road isn't as important as the Cot, especially since we have another, we have our generic grade three searcher. So that's why Igni Road is a three of instead of the Cot being a three of or Torrid Cannon be a three of. In all due honesty, I believe that the end, Torrid Cannon, and the Cot are like the real core of the cross. Igni Road is an, as amazing as a rear guard and as amazing as a uh, grade two ride. But when it comes to the bare necessities, we really do need Torrid Cannon and Dakot. To start off our grade one lineup, we're going to be running four copies of Ermo. Ermo is a very, very good staple card in V-Series Kagro. And I believe it's even a staple in premium, but I'm not completely sure. Getting a plus one simply by retiring your opponent's rear guard, even if it's by skill or just by battle, is very important. The cross slash the end Burns through a lot of counterblasts, the Cot counterblasts, Torrid Cannon counterblasts, uh, what's it called the Cross when he turns into the end counterblasts as well. And when I when you're mid battle, maybe you didn't have Torrid Cannon. I usually soul blast uh, one from Dragonic Overlord, attack a rear guard, and make my opponent really think: Should I guard this rear guard or should I save my hand for the Cross? So gaining uh, what's it called gaining a counter uh, open counterblast mid battle is always an option and it really does make your opponent think at the same time next we're going to be running four copies of flame of scorching heat gibble it's our soul charger in the deck and that's very important because in order to search out the end you need soul in order to restand that second time using uh the ends like second uh restand skill you need to have an overlord in soul you can't just soul blast anything you got to be careful what you soul blast having the cross in soul does still count but at the end of the day it's better to just you know soul blast the gibble instead of soul blasting the end you always kind of want to leave like one the end in, in soul before you add another one in like i said earlier in the video soul blast the end add the end back to soul really a good combo in my opinion and at the same time getting that plus five in the middle of battle is very important too forcing your opponent to uh guard and thanks to the cross, you always have zero cards in hand. So no matter what, you get that free soul charge. 
and it just makes that number a little bit harder to guard against later on. Next, we're going to be running three copies of Lava Flow Dragon. Lava Flow Dragon is our generic Kagero Grade 3 Searcher. It's a good first ride, especially when you're going second, so you can just search for the cross and then discard the quick shield from your hand or discard the end from your hand just to cycle through your deck. The uh, Lava Flow also makes a very good rear guard because as long as you have more rear guards than your opponent, then it gets plus five. That makes it an annoying 13k attacker, so you can easily uh, rush your opponent early game and just have better numbers uh, late game as well. Now, the one thing with Lava Flow is when it comes to the cross, the cross doesn't really retire like that. It restands and it swings. It doesn't really retire. Torrid Cannon retires. That's kind of it. We retire our own units, but that doesn't really mean anything to Lava Flow. That's why we're going to keep it at three. I don't think four is needed. We have a searcher for almost every grade. We have Lava Flow that searches for a grade three, a generic grade three. We got Igni Road that searches for the cross. And then we got the cross that searches for the end to add the soul. Adding four Lava Flow to me seems like overkill. Although I do understand if you feel as if it really is needed, by all means, maybe you're not seeing Lava Flow as much. Running it four isn't really a bad idea. Last but not least, we're going to be running three copies of Heat Shot Dragon. Heat Shot needs to be behind the cross, behind the Vanguard Circle. That's just how it is. A 21k uh, attack with the Cotton Soul and just Guard of Strict is more threatening than a 13k and then hoping for triggers. Not only that, I honestly treasure Heat Shot a lot more. I don't really ride. If I have Heat Shot and Lava Flow in my hand, I prefer to ride the Lava Flow and get that initial search off instead of running Heat Shot so I can just make sure to have one behind the Vanguard Circle. But Heat Shot is a good option when maybe you have too many grade 3s in hand. Maybe you have the end in hand. You can ride Heat Shot, discard the end, draw an extra card. Filtering your hand is important, especially in this deck. In my opinion, I would not want to ride the end. I would always want to stay on the cross. So if I only get one Force 2 marker, that's completely fine with me. Now, when I said if you wanted to increase your numbers for Lava Flow, maybe you prefer to have uh, four Lava Flow dragons in your deck, then I would most likely run four Lava Flow and two Heat Shot instead of the three and three. But that is personal preference. For the trigger lineup, again, personal preference. When it comes to Critical Sentinels and Draw Sentinels, half and half isn't a bad idea. I believe that four running four critical sentinels will clog up the deck because it's really helpful when you're you know mid battle and you get a draw trigger sentinel and then add another card to your hand and then discard the three to every stand again that's extremely helpful uh, when you're trying to end the game so i don't want to eliminate that limiting that kind of possibility is really terrible in my opinion and at the same time and everything too you know you can't you don't have a lot of cards in hand with the cross because you either retire your own units or discard cards to restand. So you kind of really do need at least two draw sentinels for this deck. Like I kind of briefly mentioned earlier in this video, force two is the way to go. Force two allows you to end the game as quickly as possible, allows you to secure that win. If you're playing two out of three, it kind of ends the game a little bit faster. If you're playing best of one, it's going to be depending on like the luck of the draw at that point. But Force 2 is the only way I really run this deck. I have not figured out a way to run Force 1. I'm just going to be honest. Common gripes I have with this deck is the fact that sometimes you're going to be unlucky. Sometimes the end is going to just hit damage zone and you're not going to get a heal off. So that's why I kind of added the Dragonic Overlord just to have it a backup. And at the same time and everything, that's why you can't really run two or one copy of the end. You really need to make sure you run that three or four. So that's just one gripe I have. Uh, the survivability of the end, if it goes too long, I think you might lose. That's just how it is. That's how the end has been from day one. Uh, survivability is the major con of this deck. You need to rush and you need to rush as soon as possible. Some matchups I think you should look out for are against other rush decks like Asha and Claret. 
when you go against rush against rush, it just usually depends on who goes first and who rushes a lot easier or who rushes the most consistently. Like uh, protect decks are going to be the band of your existence, period. But with the guard restrict the cot, honestly, I think they're a little bit more bearable compared to the other decks that force you to use your hand or you die. Going first is just great with the cross. Uh, like I said earlier, you really don't want to ride the end and be stuck on the end. So you would really prefer to be on the cross. Even if you ride once, it's better than nothing. Always put the Force 2 marker on your Vanguard first and then rely on your rear guards because you're not going to have a lot of rear guards. Your rear guards kind of get rid of themselves or they're too important to be in the front row, like I said. So just keep that in mind, you know. Like always, guys, this is just a template. If there's any way that you'll fix this deck or fix the numbers, please let me know in the comment section. If you have bought any boxes or pulled anything good, I would love to see them. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram at DevUtopia. And I hope you guys have a nice day. Peace.